going to be building these cabins out in the woods, so we're going to need a generator. Generators are so loud and obnoxious. You could go to the store and buy a generator that is insulated and is very quiet. But those run you upwards of $3,000 for one of those little generators that puts out the same power. This thing was $399. I've always wanted to build a generator house to make the sound less, and I'm gonna finally do it today. A lot of the stuff I taught myself how to do, I'm learning as I go. Definitely listen to me at your own discretion and your own peril. Okay, so we're gonna need some insulation, pressure treated plywood, half inch or three quarter inch, a straight edge or a level, some flashing, your drill, your framing gun, two by sixes, nails, screws, pencils, utility knife, duct tape, and a circular saw. Basically, the house is gonna consist of walls and a little roof. The walls are made of two by six, the roof and the walls are also made of pressure treated plywood so it can withstand the elements. This little house is gonna be completely insulated and sealed, except one side is gonna be removable so you can slide the generator out, fill it with gas, and start it up again. And then you're gonna slide it back in and seal it up. You have to find out which side sucks in the air. The way you do it is you fire it up, and basically I like to take, this is pretty sophisticated, I like to take a piece of paper and use that piece of paper to help me determine where it's sucking and where it's blowing. That's where it sucks. That's where it blows. The first thing that you're gonna do, you're gonna need to build walls for your generator. This is basic framing. You've got studs going up and down, and you've got plates top and bottom going across like that. Here's one of the walls. I've gotten that just by measuring the side of my generator right here. These little stubber walls are going on the inside in between the longer walls. I'm gonna nail this little stubber into this right here, What make what we call a Cali L. Actually, that's probably not the right term. Don't quote me on that. Cali L. Or is this a Cali L? Cali L. Now that I've got this in the right place, and it's I don't have to hold it up and do some crazy stuff because I got that braced right there, I'm gonna nail in this side. I know that this is the base, and we don't want this nice, untreated fur sitting on the ground of the forest because it'll get wet and it'll rot. So what we need to do is cut a piece for this to be able to sit on. I'm gonna go cut that out of pressure-treated plywood and screw it to the bottom here. Not this one, because this is our removable one. I'm gonna put the piece of plywood on and just screw it to this part, this part, and this part. Now again, remember, this is a generator cabin. This does not have to be perfect, okay? This needs to serve a function. The function is to quiet down the generator and not rot into the ground in the meantime. If you're on the internet, people will definitely tell you you're a hack, but no one's gonna come through and see your generator house and be like, dude, what? You were a quarter inch shy. This piece of sheathing is gonna be 36 inches long, 21 and a quarter inches tall, 36 by 21. I'm gonna get two of those. Those are the walls for our generator house. Generator cabin! Safety goggles are cool because you don't wanna go blind building a generator cabin or any other kind of cabin. Another wall. Now I got, oh. Oh. Stay. Ooh, nice. The first screw is always the hardest. That sounds like a Rod Stewart song. Screw is the hardest. Now I'm gonna just put screws in all the studs, all the plates, every like four inches. You remember we didn't attach the fourth wall because this is how the generator is gonna slide in and out. We have the other piece of plywood and we're gonna put it on. I'm only gonna screw to these studs, this plate and this plate. I'm making sure not to screw to these ones over here, otherwise I won't be able to remove the wall. And you gotta remove the wall. Okay. Did I screw to the thing I told you not to screw to? No, I thought I did though. Let's see if I'm right, okay. Bam, so now, when we wanna service our generator, turn it on, add gas, add oil, we have a wall that removes. We'll put a little handle right here so we can pull it, pull it down and pull it out. Next step, cut a hole for the exhaust and a hole for the exhaust. I don't know what that word is. Someone let me know. What's the opposite of exhaust? 
Inzost. I know that we're gonna be using this end of the generator more than this end. This end you really only use to get the gas. So we want this end to be the end that is closest to the door that opens up or the wall that opens up on the generator cabin. On the intake, I'm gonna measure the diameter that we need the intake port to be. And I'm also gonna measure from the side and the bottom where the center of that is going to be. To make the exhaust port and the intake port, uh, we're gonna use some metal flashing. With the utility knife, you can just cut this, you score it, okay? And then bend it back and forth and it pops right off like that. You take a piece of duct tape, start with little pieces and then go over with a nice fatty bobatty piece. Now I'm gonna take my full piece. You know what, we're even gonna wrap it. This is called duct tape. And what we've made is basically a duct. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Here's where the center line is gonna be. Like this and like this. That's the center of the hole. And we get that about centered. And now I'm gonna trace this hole. Now I take my saws off. Ow! So here's our intake hole. So when you open it up, that's where the intake is gonna sit. Okay, so we do the same thing with the exhaust port. Then it gets the job done. Update. Make sure that you make the exhaust port on your generator cabin way bigger than that two inch one that I told you to do before. The exhaust port wasn't exactly lined up where it should be so that heat was just bouncing around inside our generator cabin, overheated the generator, the generator started to get a vapor lock, stopped working. So what I did is I came out here and I just cut in a big old like two foot by two foot hole. The whole back wall exposed the whole back of the generator so that all that heat is escaping. I got my sharp knife. I got my insulation. Now with this stuff, while this is compressed so I can cut it easier, I start to cut really lightly and make sure I've cut through all the paper. See that? All the paper's been cut. Now I press down tight, just go a couple of light cuts and then you get a nice little piece like that. After it's been insulated, we built these little rafters. You don't want to do just a flat board because the rain will just pool up on it. So you have to, you want to have at least a little bit of pitch to it. And that's why I just took a two by six. I went to the middle and I went up three and a half inches and I connected the dots. They're 15 inches apart. So when I take the insulation, I pop it in. So the paper is on the bottom side where the generator's at. So none of this falls down into the generator. We've got the roof boards. One goes on there, one goes on right here. Flashing right here so the rain doesn't get in there. Seal up the sides so this doesn't become a mouse cabin. And then we're good to go. So let's do those things, fire it up, see if it works. Make sure that it's still exhausting out the back. It's still sucking in air. Oh yeah. Is it quieter? What's up now? got a generator that's nice and quiet like I like my classroom. It works, can you believe me? It works. Stay tuned next time for more things I think I know how to do. Uh, and I might think of some more to uh, share with you. This is what I call the Ace Ventura test. Okay, ready? Ah! There's no way that he could have been murdered. <laughs> please be sure to like and subscribe this channel so you never miss an update. And please back us on Patreon so we can keep these free videos coming. Yes, free ain't free. We need you. Back us. Please.